Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? All right, ushers, hey, all those that are coming in, please listen to the ushers, please. Don't give them eye lip service, right? And I need everybody as they seat you, I need you to fill up all these seats. The reason being is because more people who are not as timely as you, they're going to come and we need to sit them in the back so the rest of us are not distracted. So get out your comfort zone. You don't run the show. Get next to somebody. I hear you right now. You don't like really being around a whole lot of people. Then you shouldn't get saved. And don't go to heaven. Go, go to hell where they isolate people. Everybody in hell in solitary confinement. Y'all got it? And the reason why I say that is because practically people get their lives to the Lord, but they still run their own life. And when you keep running your own life, and particularly that it's an indication that you're carnal. You're, you're born again, but your reasoning and how you feel and what you think is running you instead of Jesus. And if that happens in the body of Christ, we are not able to be effective in this dysfunctional fallen society. Y'all got it? Yes. So what you and I have to do is, here's what Jesus said, I'm, I'm coming right out the box on you. He said, here's what he says. Now he's talking about disciples. Some of, some of us, you, you won't be a disciple. But if God sent you here, you're supposed to be one. Now you may choose not to be one. There are citizens in the kingdom and there are disciples. Citizens, just like a lot of Americans, because you don't talk a lot, you, you grew up here, you're native here, you don't talk a lot to people who are mig uh, immigrants or people who came from other countries. A lot of times you don't talk to them. You don't ask them questions. I ask them questions. And one of the number one questions I ask them is, what was it like where you came from? And why are you on a life raft? Why a life raft getting here? Why are you trying to get this border and pay money to the cartel to get you out of Mexico? There must be something here that people who's, who were born here sleeping on. There must be something here that even though you think is bad, even though you think crime is bad, you talking about bad in one area. They coming from places where the whole country bad. This is to get rid of all your professional Christianity. Literally, and, and I've, I've experienced it, where you, you, people speak well of you, but you just jacked up at home. Bad temper, temper tantrums. Somebody say those days over. I remember talking to someone, it was a Wednesday Bible study, and I said, uh, if your family don't want to follow the Lord, Hmm. Huh. And they are around you. And they don't want to have nothing to do with the Lord. Something wrong. Now here's what the average person who loves to reason now. Well, you know the Bible said that when Jesus come, they find these verses all out of context. When Jesus come, is he going to put mother against daughter and father against son? Right? And they're going to say, that's what the Bible said. No. And then he, here's another one. Here's, here's what Jesus said. Unless you hate father, mother, sister, brother, and even your own life, you will not. It didn't say can't not. You will not enter the kingdom of God. Now, I know now you're saying, What? He telling us to hate? No, 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 no. That's why you either need to study. I have somebody in front of you that's been studying. And not just studying, but have experienced what they've been studying. Because it's easy. Because a lot of you all impressed by how people present stuff. Man, they're, good, they're a good teacher. What did you get out of it? How is it working in their own life? I love to see, it was, not, it was about a, last week, 
I saw, I saw a guy else, outside, he had the chef uniform on. And I said, man, you the chef? He said, yeah, I'm a chef. I said, you eating your own food? I said, I'd love to see that. I said, I'm gonna keep coming back to this restaurant. If the chef eat his own food, I'm, I'm going there. <laughs> Minister Lamont said, what restaurant? And if we're not eating our own food, you're in a kingdom of power. You're in a kingdom that change hearts. You're in a kingdom that not only change hearts, but will remove addictions. You're in a kingdom that will heal marriages. You're in a kingdom that will heal relationships. You're in a kingdom that is supernatural, that should exhibit it by miracles, signs, and wonders. You're in a kingdom where you should have peace. And not just peace with God, but the peace of God. You're in a kingdom that a king has already liberated you, made you clean, given you the capacity to totally change your life. Where you can really be a transparent person. Where you're not trying to make it look good or make it look right. Because you already know God has first declared you righteous. But then our decision to live on a daily basis will determine whether we live righteous. So we're in a series and it's called Built, Bible Built. Somebody say Bible Built. Bible Built. So what we're doing is, in the Word of God is revelation. Only through revelation will you change. Not through knowing the Bible. Not through knowing scriptures. Only through revelation when God opened your heart to understand what he's given you as knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. Y'all got that? Yes. Y'all know what that means? People that got a bunch of knowledge, know the Bible, typically will be prideful. Yes. Y'all got it? Yes. But the kingdom will humble you. Yes. The kingdom will humble you. Yes. And I'm not talking about make you pity and put your head down. I'm not talking about put your skirt above your knees. I'm literally talking about humble where you realize apart from God, you and I are broken. You and I will do broken things. Yeah. And even once we get born again, if we don't follow him and still hate our own opinion. By the way, when he says, unless you hate father and mother, that word literally means love less. That means Jesus' words carry more weight than you, your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, and Rev. Now I got to apologize, I haven't told the team, we had an amazing night, um, Friday night. Yeah. It was. And, and some of you square Christians <laughs> don't want to go to parties. You get opportunities to come out so you can fellowship yeah. and connect besides in the roles but that you can get around people, you can have a good time, you can have a party. Because some of y'all gonna be surprised when you get to heaven that God gonna be popping bottles, having a great time. Some of y'all gonna be shocked that God is funny and has fun. And when you get to heaven, <laughs> you gonna be shocked. You gonna go before him all mean-faced and he's going to be smiling. And then for some of us, you're going to get to heaven, then God's going to send an angel and say, go with that angel. And that angel will go in the room, and, on, and the room going to be a bunch of shelves. And on those shelves going to be everything you left on, on a shelf that he wanted to give you while you were here. Now, for disclosure, I haven't talked with the leaders because they didn't do this purposely. But there was a song that was played at, that, uh, at our uh, sneaker, sneaker ball that was inappropriate, right? And I was out there dancing. <laughs> Head, shoulders. It was, it was from my, my little homie. He's from Baton Rouge. Um, it was a song made by... Um, Lil Bootsy. <laughs> By the way, I've prayed and laid hands on Lil Bootsy. 
he was in a wheelchair while we were in um, Florida. In the mall. He was in a wheelchair with a stack full of cash on his lap. And the Lord said, go pray for him. Lay hands on him. Because somebody that influenced him was a childhood friend of mine. And I went over, prayed for him. And all I know is he's not in a wheelchair anymore. Amen. Now, I haven't followed up with little Boosie. Not yet. You got to understand. You got to understand. Satan is a perverter. So these young people with this amazing talent of really poetry, we call rap. What the enemy will do is try to deprave humanity through their giftings. That's why God calls you out so he can convert your gift because Satan has perverted it. Y'all got it? So I brought that as it relates to the song is because you got to be aware of that because you can be bumping and grinding while Satan is influencing your mind. And you end up, you and I end up struggling with stuff that we're not supposed to be struggling with because we've been letting the wrong stuff in. Hello. Now, Bible built is under the title today, Identity. I'm telling you, the greatest challenge that will cause you to be victorious in your life is when you realize who you really are. Titles won't give it to you. Attending church won't give it to you. A bunch of money won't give it to you. Only when you really know who you are will you start begin to think differently. Until then, in this world, you'll be out here singing, I'm out here grinding. God didn't tell you to grind. Most of us, a lot of people out here surviving. You're not put here to survive. You are put here to thrive. You're not put here <laughs> just to do anything. You were put here for a purpose. You've already been equipped before you got in your mother's womb. Already. You already got it. You didn't come from your mother's womb. You came through it. Don't ever forget that. You are actually a part of the glory of God. That when God made you, he broke the mold. You and, come on. But we had an original father named Adam. And I know to some of you all, these are Bible, uh, what I call kid stories. You don't believe that God could put a man in the belly of a fish. That's because you don't know who God is. And we limit God to our little puny brain that only has experience of at best 100 years, maybe 80. And you mean to tell me in 80 years, you smarter than eternity? That wouldn't be wise on your part. We would call that arrogance. God don't need our help. Hello. Last time I checked, you're not at the right hand. You here. Now you're seated in the right hand, Jesus. And we have the Spirit of God on the inside of us, and you'll see in a second. So today's title is Identity, but I'm coming from the foundation of holiness leads to wholeness. And we don't even talk about holiness anymore. Most people don't even know what holiness is. There's a lot of psychological and psychotic teachings in the church. But when you teach people who they are and they get the revelation of it, you won't need to see a whole bunch of therapists. Y'all do know they wanted to get rid of Jesus because he was closing the hospitals up. Right. Y'all hear, hear what I said? Because 
One, they wanted to kill Paul because he's telling them to get rid of the idols. And the people that make the idols, they're going to lose their business. So they got together and said, we need to get this joker. Get him out of here. Because they don't understand that God can give them a new trade. They can get rid of false work that they're doing that's bringing false stuff to real stuff. So holiness leads to what? Wholeness. Give somebody a high five. No, no, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me do this. Let me give some instructions. Do not sit here like a bump on a log. Amen. Y'all got it? Um, I'm used to playing on the football field, so you'll see me periodically move. This is now my field, by the way. But this one is you on the field. You on the field. Everybody say, I'm on the field. I'm on the field. So I'm, I'm expecting you to make plays. I don't expect you to be cheering while I make plays. I expect you to make plays. Y'all got it? Because yes. there's going to come a time where eventually I'll go off the field and somebody else will be up here. But the first thing I got to do is make sure whoever's up here, we connected at the heart. So before you sit down, I shared this with the intercessors yesterday. I have this Apple Watch on, and this Apple Watch, and I think I got my phone around here somewhere. Yeah, I got my phone. So my Apple Watch had been not working for about two weeks, which is unusual for me to have something around me that long that's not working. I just gave somebody a word. You need to get rid of that relationship right now. <laughs> it ain't working. It ain't working. <laughs> Y'all see how the Holy Spirit just be dropping that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> God loves you. God loves you. He'll, if somebody spends enough time with the Lord, and I'm not talking about a longevity of time. I'm talking about real sincere time. Then that under shepherd is not only going to hear the, the, what God wants them to give, give the people, but are going to also hit your everyday stuff you're dealing with and bring you some understanding. So you can get peace back in your life, joy back in your life. Come on, somebody. What I've learned, and even through my own experience, being a part of the five-fold ministry gifts, five-fold ministry, you may not know what that means. It's, those are not religious terms. Those are governmental terms. And you're in a government, not a religion. You're in a government, not a religion. You have a king. You got it? And he said, the government is on his shoulders. By the way, you get called out, you get born again, you are, what's, you are part of the legislative body of his kingdom in this jurisdiction. You're supposed to, we're supposed to be identifying within our midst or within the body of Christ at large, who are the candidates that God has chosen for these different jurisdictions and appointments in this community. The church is supposed to be influencing this. Not by advertising dollars, but by revelation that we're picking candidates because of the spirit of God's direction and not because they black, white, look good, don't look good, or they present well, or they from your school, they school, making these decisions. And therefore, Satan is able to do what he wants to do because the Christians in the church are carnal. And they're making decisions on what looks good, what looks like them, what they like, instead of what does God say? Whose king is God choosing? There's no such thing as group think. He said many are going to be lost. Small, narrow is the way. Narrow. Many are going to be lost. Many, many, many. He said the way is narrow. Narrow simply meaning Find out what the master is telling us and do exactly what he says. The master will tell you how to love somebody. Love them, don't give them a dime. Because they are prodigal and I need them to come home. Love them, talk to them, but don't give them a dime. Because that's my money I gave you. Somebody say, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm ahead. Now my phone. It wasn't working. 
Now it's time. And by the way, if the Holy Spirit in you, you, and, and if the Holy Spirit is operating right, anything broken, you're going to get it fixed. <laughs> How long are you going to keep that car? Um, yeah, got the light on. And it's, you, it, you kind of got a right blank of thing, and it's really not working. And you done rigged it up. Instead of getting it fixed. Right? Somebody here right now, you right, right now, something going on with that car, and you done got used to it. <laughs> right? You, some kind of way, if you hit the accelerator too fast, it'll stop. And instead of getting it fixed, you, you done rigged that thing up, and now you done adjust yourself. You've adjusted yourself to dysfunction. And if you do it in your car, you're going to do it in other areas of your life. First place you need to clean up is your room. If your room dirty, everything else is going to be dirty. I hear some of y'all right now. Who, who you think you use? So my, 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 it's not working. This is supposed to be working. Stuff that you have is supposed to be working. You don't need Viagra. You don't need to come in a package with no name on it. The kingdom will cause things to be resurrected. And stop drinking all them energy drinks. If you got to keep drinking all these energy drinks, you, you, you're shutting down your body. Yeah. Something's wrong if you got to keep drinking energy drinks. I stay as far away from that stuff as I can. Because if you put something artificial in, what that's going to do is cause the real stuff. You're telling the real stuff inside of you that's supposed to give you energy. You're telling it to shut down. If you keep smoking weed to try to get your system to chill out and calm down, because you're all dysfunctional. You say, but you're crazy. <laughs> and so you think, you know, I'm going to give me a little weed. You know, it ain't bad, right? Jesus smoke. We be, uh, I don't know where the chapter and verse is, but I mean, <laughs> you know, people say anything. They just say anything. <laughs> Yeah, I think he was smoking a little cigar and all that stuff. No, you've been watching Michael Jordan and all these people smoke cigarettes. Next thing you know, you smoking cigarettes, cigars. Yeah, it's just a popular thing to do. You see Jordan doing. N never mind his eyes red as almost I don't know what. In other words, to, to count, carry that kind of pressure that that man carries, to be idolized the way people idolize him. And I don't know if he's saved. I had a chance to meet with him. It was so brief. I didn't get a chance to, I didn't ask him that. I'll see him again. But the point is, you don't need anything external. We're, we're relying on external, external things because we're not focusing on eternal things. So this phone wasn't working and I, y'all you know, know what I didn't do? I didn't go to an uh, offshoot. We, f we fix all, all watches. To, to save me two, three dollars. <laughs> I went to the Apple store. And the Apple store is like bold. And I can hear some of y'all right now. Pastor, I got my high heels on. We've been standing up a good little while. There's no church I've been to that has people standing up like this. See, that's why I don't like coming here. I hear y'all. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But the Spirit of God is telling me, and I know y'all going to say, hey, God. Now, you haven't spent time with them at all this week, but you can tell me what I ain't God. This, this book been in your basement for all since January, and you're going to stand here and tell me what's God. 
We're in a season that you have to be willing to do what you need to do in order to receive what God has for you, where you are going to have to be, uh, hold up, hold up, hold up, save your applause. Remember, you're not on the field. You're on the field. You're on the field. You're not in the stands. You clap in the, fan, in the, in the stands because you're a fan. Y'all got it? He a fan. He a fan. That's 20 and under. 20 and under. Diss track. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You're not a fan. You're a part of God's kingdom. And when I share these things, you got to receive this personally as God is talking to me. Y'all got it? So, it's not working. It wouldn't charge all the way. It was getting hot. Am I describing somebody? Your clock not working, and you're getting hot. So how many of y'all know I realize that's not normal? And even ladies, when you experience your men, all pause. I can hear some of y'all right now. Now, he ain't a man. He don't need to go there. In other words, just because you have a cycle change don't mean you have to believe for the symptoms of what other people experience. But if you just go with it, then you experience what everybody else experiences. Got it? Right? Man, it's freezing in the house. <laughs> I had a man that said, watch out, pastor. So I, goes to, I go to Apple Store, and lo and behold, there's a genius section. Now, when I first heard that years ago, when I went there for the first time and I saw the genius, the first thing I asked them, I said, what makes you a genius? And they said, we've studied and we specialize in the Apple product. I said, good. So when I talk to a genius, I expect things to get fixed. I ain't got time to go back to... Uh, those auto mechanics, shade tree mechanics y'all be going to. I want to get the problem solved. I don't want to deal with this again. And by the way, if you're doing a job, you sh- the customer should have that same expectation of your work. If you are a contractor, I should be able to trust you on the strength of somebody else telling me that you did a good job. You can give somebody a high five, you may be seated. Now get rid of your little attitude. <laughs> so when, my, when, when the genius got my watch, he said, he said, oh man. He told me, he said, what's it, what's, what's it doing? What is it doing? What is it doing? And I told him, I said, it's not charging all the way. And, and it's getting hot. And he said, uh, okay, let me take a look at it. And he, here's what he said. He says, your watch is not connected to your phone. I thought it was connected. How many sitting in here, you think you connected to God? But you're hot. You're tired because your battery not fully charging. But I'm thinking it was connected. And I mean, I said, you mean to tell me my phone not being paired with my watch, um, my phone will cause my battery to not fully charge? Yes, sir. You mean it's the reason why my phone is hot? Yes, sir. Now, how many of y'all know in my mind, I'm thinking... This joker don't know what you're talking about. 
<laughs> this joker don't know what he's talking about, man. He talking about that. this stuff don't have nothing to do with no pairing. But I had enough sense to stay there and listen to him. And he did. He put them together. And he told me how to pair it. But it was going to take a little time in the store, and I didn't have time. So I said to him, I said, he said, well, you don't have enough time, so you could, do, you could pair at home. He said, well, here's what I'll do. I'll go print out a sheet of instructions. And all you got to do is follow the instructions. Isn't that what God did? But how many men would get home with the watch and the phone, not even look at the sheet printed out? Isn't that what you did when you got married? Marriage was not for sex. Sex is a byproduct. Sexual appetites need to be brought under control. Because marriage doesn't stop it. I don't know why you're clapping. I told you we're on the field together. <laughs> Repetition is the mother of learning. So eventually, if I keep saying it, he's going to get it. So guess what I did? I did a miracle. I got that sheet. I followed the instructions. And my phone paired. And you know what I noticed? It charges all the way now. It doesn't get hot anymore. Was that a miracle? Of course not. That's called righteousness. What is it called? Righteousness. He made you right so you and I can live right. Because your heavenly Father and the Lord and the Holy Spirit are obsessed with things being done right. How are we doing? Good. There's a right time to get married. There's a right time to prepare for marriage. Is the right time to die? And is the right time to live? Is it time for peace? It's a time for war. Man, I like my little watch. Just something just feels good when stuff working right. My parents gave us this van in college. A blue van. It used to be the van my parents used to deliver flowers for the flower shop. But the van, the radiator had a hole in it. And it would leak. And then a vehicle get hot and we had to go put water in it. And how many of y'all know we got used to that? Yeah. Then somebody told us if you put pepper and the radiator, it'll clog it. And it did. So just from a natural standpoint, you think that's a good thing to put in you? It clogged and filled the hole of the hole in the radiator. How many of y'all know that radiator was not created to be plugged by pepper? <laughs> Y'all got it? Yes. So that joint you smoke, it won't make you whole. I know some of y'all like, why you keep talking about weed and all of that? <laughs> y'all don't see all these, uh, these popping up places? Cannabis. Cannabis. The best weed. All these advertisements. Right? Y'all know why it became the laws got changed in this country? Because you're in a democracy. In a democracy, we think it's the best form of government. It's not. 
But what a democracy will do is give people a vote when they start seeing stuff happen on a regular basis. So when you start seeing dysfunction on a regular basis, you'll start thinking that's normal. And then you elect people and start changing the rules to adjust to the, you know, the stuff that's not normal. That's right. Without knowing, it's going to impact everybody. Yes. And that on this earth, this earth will vomit up the inhabitants who are living lives that are not holy. Yes. I know it's hard for y'all to believe that. Inside this natural earth that God has created, it's created to function at the highest level of righteousness. And if righteousness, the people living in righteousness is on the land, then that land is going to be good. If there's a protracted period of wickedness, if there's a protracted period of wickedness, this land is going to vomit up the people. So you'll start seeing more tornadoes. You'll start seeing more hurricanes. You'll start seeing uh, tsunamis. You'll start seeing just disruptions in the earth. And the insurance companies call it acts of God. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Why am I saying that? Because the holy group is supposed to be in here. And if this group not holy, the earth ain't got a chance. If I'm sitting here thinking just because I'm saved, I can live in an old cotton way. That's a gross miscalculation of my salvation and it's a misunderstanding of grace. Grace is to be declared righteous and then the Spirit of God to be inside of you to help you and I live right. To empower us to overcome the stuff that we used to do. To make us honest people and we get out of dark. We're no longer people of darkness. We've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness and now we're in the kingdom of light. Y'all got it? All right, so let's, let's build this. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. What God is going to show you through the book of Isaiah, and young people, all of us can understand this. All of us can understand this. Was what you're getting ready to see now is God doing something in the invisible realm that you cannot physically see. And something similar happened to you when you got born again. Here is Isaiah. Somebody say Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, now I want you to put this with you. Who's stopping you from seeing clearly who the Lord is? Because Isaiah is telling us, Isaiah is telling us, Isaiah is telling us. Somebody say Isaiah is telling us. Isaiah is telling us. No, he, he said stop for a second and let them know. Get the people out of sleeping sitting here like a bump on a log, pay attention to this, put some notes down, and think about what I'm saying to you and what God is saying to us. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord seated, sitting upon a what? Throne. Low. And, and his what? Filled the what? God has given this young man, given Isaiah, this prophet, insight on the physical kingdom of God, which is in spiritual form right now. He's given him. Now he's telling him what he sees. So he sees this throne. Above it stood the what? Those are angels that protect the presence of God. Each one has six wings. Two covered their face, two covered their feet, and two helped them fly. And one cried to another. Who's crying one to another? Cry me, they're shouting. Who's shouting? And what are they shouting? What are they shouting? So there's some kind of presence that they're experiencing that caused them to shout based on what they're experiencing and what they're seeing. Holy, 
holy, holy. That's the first thing you got to stop at. The Lord that you serve. He's holy, holy, holy. So if I was the devil, I want to get God's kids dirty, dirty, dirty. Because I don't want them to live holy, holy, holy. Because when they live holy, 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 bodies heal itself. Soul get healed. They don't need another hit. They don't need the henny. They don't need another man. They don't need another woman. They don't need a title. They don't need to be in church. They don't need to be outside. They holy, 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 holy is not was is the Lord God. What the Lord of hosts? The whole earth is full of his glory. You can sit in churches and get psychology teaching. Read the scriptures. Mortify the deeds of your flesh. You already, some of y'all quote all, we can quote all that stuff. But until you realize he's holy. Holy. See, the more you know who he is, the more you're going to know who you are. Holy, holy, holy. You don't realize the more you know who your father is and you shout what you see because you're looking at a mirror, the more you're going to see you. Not weird. Holy. Not outwardly. Inwardly. Holy. What does that mean? Set apart. You're not common. That's why you're not a common person. There's nobody. You may have a doppelganger, but there's no one. Not even your identical twin is exactly like you. So he created all the earth full of his what? Glory. Guess who part of his glory? then why are you treating yourself common? Holy set apart people get stuff fixed. Because they hold, holiness leads to wholeness. When I'm whole, I make everything else whole. Come on, man, we be around here hanging around all these, these old broke up marriages. We still married, but ain't no fun. The thrill is gone. I've experienced that. I've experienced that. Because what ends up happening, you go through things. Go through things that may rock your world. And when you go through things that may rock your world, Satan is after your soul. He's trying to get trauma in your soul. He's trying to mess with your mind, your will, and your emotions. You could be born again, but he wants to attack your soul. And attacking your soul, if it gets trauma, if things happen, he knows a diseased soul will emanate and cause to come out of it unnatural things. Diseases of the soul causes desires, lustful things to try to soothe the wound. And when you don't go to the master who was wounded for your transgression, bruised for your iniquity, the chastisement, what we were supposed to get, fell on him. And by his stripes, I'm here. Now, if you don't understand that, you'll be saved, but not free. I'll be saved, looking good, men and women speaking well of me, but not be doing so well. Am I in the right place? Yes, sir. Uh, y'all want some religion? Well, won't he do it? Jesus. 
yeah, 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 yeah. Won't he make a way? God is for you. Well, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? <laughs> Leave out here and be mad as hell. <laughs> they got all this emotion, man, and going out here, this stuff still on me, man. <laughs> and then want your children to keep coming to this? <laughs> your children be like, you go there and I ain't going there. <laughs> they don't even answer your call on Sundays. <laughs> Around here with all that stuff, man. Got time for this? Ain't nobody got time for this. Holy, 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 holy. He's getting this revelation in the unseen. And you've, he, you've been declared holy. He'll declare you before you experience it. But if I know what he didn't call me, I can start experiencing what he called me for. Our marriages should be healed. Man, Pastor T and I were going through while I was serving you. The revelation of the covenant is what kept me there. I hear some of y'all right. Yeah, I kind of sensed something was you or y'all were going through something. <laughs> You uh, unlicensed doctor, <laughs> unlicensed psychiatrist. Some things ain't your business. And some things he allow you to go through that you didn't necessarily choose. So you can better have empathy and long suffering with people and have enough of freedom in Christ knowing who you are to not stand here like you got everything going on half of the jokers will be living better and enjoying life if they just be honest I got to go through the same laundry and washing machine you do you don't get a special one because you got more money. Because right. this one is not based on dollars and cents. This is based on the blood of Jesus. And last time I checked, to get clean, everybody got to go through that washing machine. I'm dropping stuff in here, man. Man, man, man. You've been set apart for this. We're supposed to have officials in all different capacities. I'm talking about from the church. Amen. Not from religion. From the government of the kingdom. You've been sent here for such a time as this. Yes. Not to be like everybody else and not try to do something to be something. You already be something. When God called you, he knew you were something. He knew you were something acting like a nothing. Because you didn't know that you were something. And because you wasn't something, this world teach you to do something so you can be something. But you don't do to be. You be and do. Man, this dude, man, I, I'm, I'm finished. I'm, I'm finished, man. I, I, can't get, I, can't get a, I can't get somebody on the field doing Let's go, baby. Oh, man. Come on, man. Some of the decisions you're going to make has nothing to do with how you feel. <laughs> what? I don't feel like going to church. What that got to do with it? Come on, Tina, the prophetess. What love got to do with it? Love has everything to do with it. Everything you do is supposed to be based on love. And I can tell you, as I close, you won't have any high level of experience in the kingdom until you understand love. Mm. Yes. 
I hear people say, faith, faith, faith. But faith operates by love. According to Galatians, we love him because he first loved us. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall what? But have what? Y'all know what everlasting life is? Eternity starts as soon as you know Jesus and know the Father. So now, you're not bothered by death. Death going to happen on this side. You understand death better. You understand that eternity lives in you now. I have eternal life inside of me now. I got a divine nature inside of me now. Now my brain want to go back to the street. My brain sometimes just... I don't know about y'all, just my brain. Sometimes, I saw a guy, he had a cell phone or something, and I don't know why, just a thought came to me, slap that phone out of his hand. <laughs> I don't know where that come from. <laughs> I ain't been listening to songs talking about slapping phones. <laughs> I can't tell you, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> you may not can stop a bird from dropping something on your head. But you darn show can keep them from building a nest in your head. All right. All right. So I just told you something. You may be saying, man, should I be listening to that preacher, man? He, he around here talking about slapping people's phones and all that kind of stuff. Man, you got to understand, you're still in a fallen world and your mind got to be renewed. And Satan has access to shoot a fiery dart, but you got the shield of faith. And you don't get distracted because some crazy thought come, right? I should have slapped that fat. All of a sudden, brothers, I'm a, matter of fact, all the men stand up right now. Stand up right now. Stand up. All the men stand up right now. Now, some of y'all not sitting. Now, are you questionable? Some of y'all still sitting down, so I don't know. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. That's not for me. That's for you. Now, we need to have the most men ever had here come to this locker room tomorrow night. You need to be at the locker room tomorrow night. You need to be at the locker room tomorrow night. Got too many isolated dudes. Got too many brothers. You're struggling when all you got to do is get connected with somebody. And have somebody you can be honest with. Now you got to build that honesty gradually. Because not everybody trusts it. I don't care if they're in a church. But you do need to be in connection in this environment. I need you here tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And I need you here and ready as a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ to get you some instructions so you can dominate wherever you are. Where a woman could be so excited about you that every time she come around you, she say, Hercules, Hercules. When she lay down at night and the marriage over behind and they hear something in the house, she ain't got to worry about you tapping hers, asking her, what is, what's, what is that? You getting up, baby, stay here, I got you. And I need my youngsters, because my youngsters, high school, middle school, you are the influencers. You are the influencers. You are the influencers. Man, these young people struggling with these devices. Make your device a righteous device. Make it a device that you're going to use only for edification purposes and not to consume stuff that's going to mess with your mind, cause you to follow after lust. You need to be here tomorrow. And ladies, use your influence. Come on, married ladies. Tell them I'll give you five days in a row. Sometimes by any means necessary. Come on, wives. I'll give you five days in a row, boy. <laughs> Some people just got that. They just got it. They just got it. They just got it. If you, if ladies, if you knew this was for your children, if you knew this was for your peace of mind, if you knew that this guy, if he gets connected to Christ and to a, a, bro, a bunch of brothers who are not perfect, but are trying to are walking in this thing, where we can be honest with each other, where we ain't trying to placate like I'm this and I'm that. I ain't all that. I'm a, tempter, I'm a person that's not going to quit. 
And if, if I was betting on anybody, I'd bet on me. That I know how to get over bad plays. You don't let a, one bad play cause you to have two bad ones. You don't let one game cause you to lose life. Y'all got me? Are y'all tracking with me? Ladies, I need you to intercede for your singles. Intercede. Wives, intercede. And I'm talking about praying the Holy Spirit. We need you, brothers. The country needs you. The communities need you. We need you. Come on, ladies. I need all y'all to say, we need you, baby. Y'all said that weak. We are, y'all said that weak. I need every lady in here to say, we need our men. We need our men. One more time. You may be seated, brothers. Now, I want to give you a quick action plan. We're talking about the holy life, right? I'll, I'll teach on it. But here we go. Watch this. Go to Jude chapter 1, verse 17, and we out. Jude 1, 17. Right? Jude 1, 17. And I'll build this foundation with this, but I want to give you something that you can do now. But beloved, he's talking to us. Remember you the words which spoken before of, of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. So one of the things as it relates to teachings in the Bible, New Testament, particularly in the epistles or the letters that the apostle Paul and others wrote. You want to always pay attention. Go back to the last verse, please. You want to always pay attention to apostles or one sent directly from Jesus. And they're going to always repeat what they heard from the risen Christ. You got it? And what they saw during his ministry. And when I call our church has an apostolic focus, meaning get people back to what Jesus originally said to the apostles. Y'all got it? Because whatever he said and they did, they saw miracles. And we're going to do the same thing because it's time to see some miracles. It's time to get addictions to just break off of you. You got it? You ain't got to be working 21 days. God will take some stuff right off of you right now, right now, in this right moment. He is not delayed because he needs time. You are capable of leaving today whole. Next verse, please. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, right? There are going to be people playing, joking about God. Thinking you crazy. Y'all got it? In the last time, talking about the days we're living in. They're going to be saying, oh, you living like that? No, 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 that's funny. They're going to be making fun of you. And in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly what? Lust. How many of y'all know that's happening now? Next verse. These be they who separate themselves. How? Sensual, having not the spirit. He's talking to the church. So that means these people are showing up in the church. But, y'all remember holy? Y'all remember what Isaiah saw? And we'll get back to Isaiah. I'll get to that next week. But I want to I give you an application because some of y'all are not praying in the, in the Holy Spirit. So it's going to be very difficult. God didn't just declare you holy. He, spent the, he sent the Holy Spirit to be in you. To help you and I be what? Holy. Not weird. Not weird. The Holy Spirit is a very practical being. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most How? So if I was the devil, I don't want you filled with the Holy Spirit. And I certainly don't want you praying in the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will help you with your infirmities, your weakness. The Holy Spirit will pray root causes what you're dealing with while you're dealing with symptoms. And notice, building yourselves up, building, that's like the word, take it out, charging a battery. Way too many of us don't spend a whole lot of time at the charging stations. You're riding your vehicles. 
and your battery low. But he gives you an opportunity. Building up, charging your battery. If your spirit gets strong, your flesh won't overcome you. If your spirit is strong, even if some try to attack your body, you're going to overcome it. But if that spirit not strong, when the temptations come, it's going to be very difficult to overcome it. And who has to do this? I'm raising up a military. I'm talking about everybody. And the women and the men including this military. The straight civilians. And here's the weapon I'm giving you. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. And I promise you. Y'all know what I do when I have difficult people? I pray in the Holy Spirit. I just had a conversation. I had to call. I've been praying in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit told me, call this vice president of this organization, which is a major organization. Call him this morning. And I called them. They didn't answer. But before I came here, they called me back. And I got a chance to give them some wisdom about some decision they're getting ready to make. Because I've been building myself up on my most holy faith. By praying in the Holy Spirit. That's why the enemy is trying to get you to try to feel something when you're praying in the Holy Spirit. You're not going to feel something. You're going to be accomplishing something. And you got to do it because he said it, not because you feeling it. Because the Holy Spirit's job is to help you. He's the same Greek word as it is for a wife. He's a paraclete, one that comes on alongside to aid. He's to help you overcome the flesh. He's to help you know your purpose. He's to help you not clap back when you've been clapped on. He'll help you organize your money. He'll help you add a name animals. He'll help you. You're supposed to do this on your own. You're supposed to be creative. The Holy Spirit is a creative. Y'all know how these little young, these youngsters with these rap songs coming up, Lil Wayne coming up with all that stuff? I'm not, what do you say? He said, I'm not, I'm not turning on my blanket. It's already my turn. I take my sand to the desert and to the beach. Where all this come from? It come from a source, not connected to the Holy Spirit, but a source of wisdom and clarity as it relates to that's going to bring people into moral depravity. But you and I have the ability to pray in the Holy Spirit and they'll give you kids some wisdom. Right. You got it? Yeah. Pastor T, as we close out, let's give them a testimony. Would you share with them the wisdom that God gave me to give to you with a situation that was kind of on your mind and kind of give, give it to them, right? And all this because I've been praying in the Holy Spirit. Some of y'all are a bunch of what I need to do, what I need to do, where I need to go. You need to go pray. Yes. You need to be praying. And prayer is not wasting time. Prayer will save you time. My prayer life keeps me from being busy. My prayer lives allow me to live a productive life. I can spend time with you. For example, I had to meet with a couple. I had to meet with them because while praying in the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit said, I'm going to send both of them to you. And he did. And I had to meet with this one, but I had an engagement. And I was to do an appearance at a celebrity golfing event yesterday. And so I had my schedule, my, my amazing assistant, Minister Max, had my schedule, everything. I saw the times. But Pastor T and I had to meet. You see, I got my natural time, but then I got God's time. Yes. So while I'm sitting here, I'm just doing it. I know it. I'm looking at my phone. I'm looking at all that. I got the external pressure. Okay, I got to go. I got to go. I got to be on time. I text Minister Max. I say, tell him I'm going to be running behind. I'm in a very important meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't like I was dealing with with high term presidents or anything like that. This was just regular lay people who I think are very important. Just like I think every one of you all are very important. Has nothing to do with your title, your money, 
and all that kind of stuff. If I look at your, your giving record, it's only to see if you really, really understand how to honor God with your tithe and honor God with your offering. I'll look at it. I used to didn't. I'll look at it to help you. Not because we need something. But if you don't understand that you have a king who requires a tithe or a tribute, then the enemy is going to always mess with your money. Always. Why? Because you have a, your money tells me where your heart is. And just because you volunteer somewhere don't mean your heart there. God connects, excuse me, God connects your heart with your money. You show me where that money going, I'm going to show you where the heart is. So now that's part of being on staff, checking that out, man. I can't pay you tithes and offerings and you don't tithe. Y'all got it? We've, we've, we've improved our parking lot with the tithes and offerings. There's so many things that we do. And I'm going to start telling you guys, yeah. we're looking to purchase another building. Yeah. But we ain't looking to have any debt. That's right. But all we need is for you to do what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Why? He says, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Yeah. In other words, I'll stand around your life and I dare Satan to mess with your washing machine. I dare him to mess with your mind. And when you and I don't honor him... He Thank says you, you're a robbing God. He didn't say you're a thief. He said you're a robber. That a robber is a gangster. A robber is somebody, I, I know it's your money. I'm taking it from you. Now, when he gives you that level of um, uh, a metaphor to help you understand, he's trying to show you how the thief is stealing, killing, and destroying in your life. He refers to Satan with the characteristics of a thief. A thief does not want you to know how they're stealing and who's stealing. So if I won't take your money, the first thing I'll get you in your heart to not believe that a king exists and you come before him with your best. I'll let you, I'll cause you to treat your king dismissive. I'll cause you to recognize and be impressed with everybody else. But your king, Amen. not realizing that your king will give you favor with everybody else. Yes. In my business, we do it. And I have always done it in my family. And I start looking at it. We're doing it and we got to do it. We're, I'm locking in even with the ministry. Amen. You, your money is not supposed to be funny. Right. Ever. Ever. You being broke and living paycheck to paycheck is broke. Because as soon as that job leave, you in trouble. That's called broke. You are not going to live like that anymore. Y'all got it? I will not live like that anymore. I can't hear you. I will not live like that anymore. Just like I said, I waited way too long to get this watch fixed. Don't wait to get your money fixed. You get your money fixed when you change your mind about your money. And when you start saying, I'm not living this broke life anymore. I'm not living with these cars. I owe everything on it. I can barely afford it. But they think I got money because I kind of car I got. Those days over. I, I will not live like this another day in my life. Come on, Pastor T, make it quick. I'm un- okay. I'm learning, <clears throat> which brings to my first point. God has really been revealing to me. Hold on, but don't, don't. The girl look good now. Look, look at the hair. Praise the Lord. The hair. I mean, that's. All right. I mean, the whole. I mean, that's. Thank you, babe. But go on. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, I have to give you the backdrop because the Lord has been dealing with me about submitting. Submission, the S word, ladies and gentlemen, about the S word. And I haven't always been submitted wholeheartedly to my husband, so the Lord's been checking my heart on this. And so there's been the situation where I've been invited to assist someone that's in a dire situation. It was really heavy on my heart, but my husband was vehemently against it. 
And I'm thinking, Lord, this is a good thing. Why is this thing on me? I can't sleep at night dealing with this thing. So I brought it to the Lord, and I prayed very specifically. One thing I've been asking God for is the spirit of wisdom. And so um, as I prayed that particular morning, I'm going to this meeting where I have to pretty much say, I cannot do this. My husband calls me that morning. And he I've been thinks, praying in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit said, call your wife about this situation. Y'all got it? Go on, Pastor Pete. Okay, so um, he calls me, and the Lord has totally changed his whole heart about the situation. But this, this is awesome, but this is the thing. Then he began to give me very specific instructions. Now remember, God's been dealing me with what? Okay, so I went to the meeting. I did everything he told me to do. And I'm telling you guys, it was incredible. It was crazy, super awesome, as I say. The spirit of wisdom was so heavy. It's like I left there thinking, oh, my God, you are so awesome. I could have been doing this all along. You know, I'd have to be dealing with some of the issues I've been dealing with if I just submit it and just do what he asked me to do. But the spirit of wisdom is on Pastor Aeneas, here, home. I mean, because he's been praying in the spirit. But, yeah, that's the testimony. It was absolutely but incredible. But what I want to make sure we do, don't get it twisted. The only reason why Pastor T had not been submission or submitting to me, I sowed that. And men, you need to know, you're going to read what you sow. I needed to submit to her just as much. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? You know, I could have left that where it was, like, and left the hero. Y'all got it? No. All you have to do, if stuff you're experiencing is not by happenstance. No, not. Sit down, have a little, you know what they be saying, have a talk with God, yes. right? right? Pray in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah, talk with Jesus. That's what it was. Yes. Have a little talk with Jesus. I think that's what it was, or what it is. Well, guess what? He'll show you what's causing what you're dealing with. Yes. Remember, he's a father. He's not going to do this. Why you ain't come to me? He's not like that. He, all right, you learn from it? Come on, let's go now. Now take this wisdom. And she had been giving me wisdom all the way back to the dealerships that I didn't listen to. So I sold that. And I had to repent for that. And matter of fact, I repented to my whole family and washed their feet. Because until repentance happens, you can't get converted. And some of us, and repentance is not as easy as you think. It's sometimes horrifying. When you really dig deep and the Holy Spirit is dealing with deeper issues and asking you to, to turn from it, to ask you to know that you didn't sin first against people. It was against God. And having that recognition in here, and I'll talk about this next week, where your praise is no longer for men, but it's from God. People put you in a certain pedestal. Because they're not around you. Right? You just see me in here. And I sound like the, the happiest guy. I talk to people. I come here smiling. And I'm quite sure sometimes, Pastor T didn't say it all the time, but I know sometimes she was thinking, Al, can I get more of that guy? Can I get more of the church guy? That patient guy with the, with the saints. Uh, my children would tell me, well, can I get some more of the encouragement that you give to the people? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to stay living like that. You really don't. You can start and allow God to heal you. Because some of this stuff comes from stuff we maybe didn't happen as a child. You may have been born in bad situations. Who knows? But how many of y'all know? Your Heavenly Father is not surprised by your story. But Jesus' story is greater than your story. And his story will change your story. And cause whatever came from your story to be a part of his glory. So never be ashamed. Jesus took the shame. Never blame people. Jesus took the blame. And anything that's hurt you, that's caused you to be lame, he heals the lame. All he asks, will you come? Will you come or are you going to sit there and continue to be 
No. Even though the Spirit is ministering to you, you're broken. He wants to heal you. And that's why he knocks on the door of your heart. And he says, the day you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. In other words, don't say no. I like to say it like this, move. I just heard the prophet ludicrous. Move. Get out of the way. Move. Get out the way. First person got to move and get out the way is you. Yeah. 